Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. You may be seated. A fox in the hen house is sort of like a cat among the pigeons. The image is of a predator loose among the prey. The assumption is that once the fox gets inside the hen house, the fox can do whatever it wants. It can kill and eat as many of the poor defenseless hens as it chooses. I did once read an article about a group of chickens that apparently ganged up on the fox and killed it instead. But that's the exception that proves the rule. It was only in the newspaper because it was a funny and unusual story. Nobody calls the newspaper when the fox gets away with it. That's not news, it's life. It's how we expect the world to work. But while nature definitely is not nice, it isn't nature that takes this from this is a thing that happens to this is the way things should be forever and ever, amen. People do that. People decide that it's the biggest and the strongest and the meanest who ought to be in charge. Good old King Herod is a classic example of that. He rules the territory that Jesus and his disciples come from. And he acts just the way we expect a human ruler to act. He is cunning, treacherous. Basically, he does whatever he can get away with because he can. When some possibly friendly, maybe, Pharisees warn Jesus, hey, Herod is out to get you, it's obvious what Jesus ought to do. It's obviously fight or flight time, right? Jesus has to either stand his ground and take Herod on head to head, or else he can flee for his life. Those are the only options. But Jesus, being Jesus, immediately goes off script. He boldly responds that he'll leave when he's ready, thank you. Oh, but that will be pretty soon, because he's heading to Jerusalem, which is even more dangerous. So now wait, is Jesus running away from Herod or not? Because it kind of looks like he is fleeing. But at the same time, he insults Herod by calling him that fox, which sounds like a fighting response. 
Herod wants people to think of him as a powerful king, but really he's just a common bully. He only gets to rule as long as the bigger bully, Rome, lets him. He's meant to be a king, but he has to follow orders, which is humiliating. So he's like the fox, a cunning predator that isn't very big. Herod is a predator, but he's not the top predator. That honor belongs to Rome, which coincidentally is often associated with a wolf. Calling Herod the fox reminds him that he is not the wolf. This practically is begging for him to be taken out by a bigger predator. So then after insulting Herod by calling him a fox, Jesus turns around and calls himself a chicken. Wait, what? Well, okay, maybe he's a fighting chicken, a rooster. A big fighting rooster could give a fox a run for its money. Literally, people would bet on it. But no, Jesus compares himself to a hen, a female chicken, more silly than impressive, scurrying around trying to round up her chicks. The image is unmistakably feminine and also kind of funny. The hen's feathered wings suggest a woman's full skirts. She rushes over here to sweep up one chick while another slips away in the opposite direction. She can never quite gather them all because they all run in different directions and she only has two arms of oh, wings. Jesus, who expects to be taken seriously as a leader, has no problem using this image for himself in a setting where the least important man thinks he's better than the most important woman. And just like that, Jesus has gone off script again. This is not the way we expect the world to work. It's not really how we think the world should work. It's certainly not how Jesus' followers think things should go. A lot of the people who came to Jesus were looking for at least a wolf or maybe even a lion. They want someone who can outfox the fox, someone tougher and stronger with bigger teeth. Someone who can force other people to follow. In fact, they don't really want a wolf because real wolves aren't like that. What they want is someone human. They want a human leader to out-bully the bullies. This never works because there's always another bully who's even bigger and the bullies get bigger and the violence increases until somebody gets killed and then there's no going back. People always think that this one time is different. This one time, it'll work to out-bully the bully. This one time, we'll be really careful and it won't get out of hand. This one time, it will stop with this one time. But once you start increasing violence, you don't get to control where it stops. All it takes is one mistake to start the cycle. 
Yet surely if anyone could win at that game, it would be God. Surely God could win the bullying game by being the biggest bully of them all. Surely God could insist things go this far and no further. But God refuses to play that game. God would rather die than play that game. God would rather be the mother hen than the biggest bully. There's a similar reversal in the book of Revelation where we are told that the Lion of Judah is about to appear and then you get a sweet little lamb who goes, bah. That's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus shows us that God is. God is the one who sends Jesus not to out fox the fox, not to out Herod Herod, not even to out Rome Rome, or even to rally the chickens to fight together, but to die, to die like a mother hen who gives her life for her chicks. And God calls us to be mother hens also. God calls us to care more about protecting those who are smaller and weaker than us than about showing our own strength. God calls us to reject the claim that might makes right. God calls us to disrupt the cycle of violence. God calls us and God will gather us safely under the wings of our mother hen. So this time in her name, we say, Amen. Amen.